realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. What's going on, everybody? Charles McCutcheon here. I'm your favorite. And as we proceed on this program called Charles's Corner, I'm going to do my best to enlighten you and give you some insight and information on everything I do. It surrounds around financial freedom. So you take different pieces of the puzzle that I have. That's what I look at. So I have the real estate going on. I have the nonprofit going on, the government contracts going on. I even do some marketing, especially with myself. So all of that, you know, with a couple other things that's out there, the cannabis, the apartments, everything thumbs up to financial freedom. I'm big on streams of income. And so we do this. On every Monday, we coming back to you at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'm not going to give the other times because I'll mess it up. <laughs> but it's just information. And so today I was telling them how to acquire apartment buildings. And on this show, I, I really like to do what I'm actually doing. So I don't – like when I'm working on somebody's nonprofit, I may do a show on nonprofits. Well, I'm working on a real estate deal, a wholesale deal, I'll bring up wholesaling. If I'm working on – finding funding, I'll do a show on funding. So I like to do what's current, like what I'm doing, because it keeps me on task on on what I'm doing. Right now I'm working on about five, maybe six different apartment buildings. One of them is a 997 unit. One is 125 units. One is 55 units. One is 30 units. One is 12 units. One is six units. And I think I have a quad. I don't really, I got to look. Quad is just four for you. So I've been working on these things. A lot of, uh, it's to me, it's all in the numbers, and that's real estate to me uh, on the number side of things. It's all in the numbers and it's relationships. So I put out the data people, uh, uh, even as early as yesterday, and they pour that. I'm going to be talking about apartment buildings. Uh, how do I do my funding? Building private capital, because that seems to stop a lot of people, and not giving personal guarantees on things like that. So I'm going to start at the top and we do a little broad thing, and then I'm going to start drilling down so you have a better, you know, help you out a little bit. That's all. You do not, let me get some myths. There's some myths out there in the real estate world. And this is from the uh, commercial and the residential. So residential is one to four units. Commercial starts at five units and up. And that's just how the banks look at it and as far as lenders look at it when they're looking at funding. So just to keep that out there for you. So that's, that's one way of looking at things. A lot of people think uh, they're going to go to this specific school and get all this knowledge and come out knocking uh, deals off the park. That's not going to happen. <laughs> the best way to do real estate is to actually do real estate. I tell people just make sure you have a good lawyer, a real estate attorney on your team. You need a good uh, either a broker from the commercial side or a realtor or a real estate agent on the residential side. So the, I know these are common terms because I don't know who's on, going to be on this line or who's going to listen to this because it lives on. So a lot of people are going to listen to this as we move forward. So I had to just start at the basis and just I'm going to just start going, you know, a little bit further. A lot of people think you need a license to do real estate. You need a license to sell real estate. As an investor, I can buy a property, and I don't need a license to buy a property. So I just want to make sure people understand that. A lot of people think you have to graduate to do commercial, you don't have to graduate to do commercial. You just really have to, for me, it's more about getting in there, getting out there, actually doing something like nothing. A lot of people want it to where it's like money falling out the trees or the sky, and it's so easy. And, you know, I've been working at this for three days and nothing happened yet. That's what I'd be hearing people say. And I'm just telling people that that's really not going to get you uh, uh, where you where you want to go. It's so much bigger than just doing this for a few days and then that's it. it it's going to take some time, family, and it's okay. Anything that's worth pursuing, that's worth doing, that literally can 
you know, one check can make you $100,000, that is definitely a game changer. And I would think you want to put the, the required amount of time in to, to do it. And so some of the deals that I do personally are for myself. Some of the deals I do that, you know, I can't do. So I say, hey, uh, any buyers out there want to get, a, you know, a piece of this deal, this is what's going on, I have it on the contract or what have you. Everything for me revolves around the legal side of, of everything that I do, but the legal side of real estate. And so the legal side of real estate is more of making sure that you've done your due diligence, making sure that the expert that you've hired, making sure that they understand what they're supposed to do. I don't need to understand. I need to have an inkling of what the, the lawyer needs to do, but I don't need to do his job. And so I see a lot of people trying to do these other folks' jobs, and you have to let people do their jobs. I'm not a, a carpenter, so I'm not going to – I know what's supposed to be done, and I know the price ranges of different things, but I'm not going to do the work. That's not – I'm not going to actually lay down the carpet. That's not what I do. So I find people that are experts in their field, and, and I hire them, and you should be doing the same thing. So I'm going to go high level and do just an over, overall guide to closing a deal, like if you was to close a deal. One of the biggest things a lot of people don't do is look in their market. They're trying to be in all these other markets and stuff like that. You can still look in your market. You know, real estate uh, is going to crash at some point, and I'm just putting it out there. You know, and, and along this call, I'm not giving any legal advice. I'm just saying it's going to crash at some point, so you have to put yourself in a position to where you can win even if the market crashes, you know. So put yourself in a great position. And when I say that, uh, I like to do creative financing deals. And creative financing to me means owner financing, meaning the owner is willing to take on the burden of the debt, keep the debt in their name. Uh, thing that I would do is, is wholesale a deal. You could wholesale an apartment complex. Let's say like that 997-unit deal right there, that's uh, probably about $35 million. Let's say you wholesaled it, okay? You, you got it under contract. If you know if if you can work the deal the way they need you to work the deal, I'm just throwing numbers so you can kind of get a feel of what's going on. So let's say you put that one under contract and it's 34 million, and let's imagine that you put down, uh, you got three percent off the deal because you gave it to somebody else, or you got off of 34 million. I mean, nobody's going to miss a hundred thousand dollars as a as a as a uh, assigning a contract to somebody else. So you, 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 I really have it under contract, then I assign the contract to somebody else, and I walk away with 100000 Nobody's caring about 100000 when you in when you in the millions. It's just I haven't seen it happen yet, and so that's just one way. I'd rather do, I'd rather do apartment complexes than I'd rather, than I'd go to the dog on uh, one house here, one house there, only because, it takes time to do these one houses, family. It takes time, and I would rather have everything under one under one roof when I'm doing this stuff. And a lot of people want it under different roofs, and I'm just like, man, it's just, it, it takes a lot of time to vet these deals, but the payout is bigger. The payout is bigger on the commercial side of things. So there's a lot of different reasons why uh, people – want to do commercial vice doing residential. Not going to go into that. you got to figure out what you want to do. Like I said, I'm going to do a step-by-step. It's going to be a high-level overview. And one of the things is choosing your market. you got to choose the size of property you want to go with, looking at the age of your property. You have to build your team. You have to go out and meet people. Like uh, you got to meet your broker. you got to meet your insurance folks who's going to run the insurance for you. You have to meet your uh, – the people that may do the grass for you, the, the landscaping folks. So I'm, you know, it's just good to have people on tap just in case you you may want to work with them. You know, you you may I don't know who you're going to be working with, but you got to go out to meet these people to say, you know, who do I want to work with, and make sure they're quality people. You have an insurance broker out there. You have a property manager out there. You you're going to need a great real estate attorney. You're going to need an appraiser to appraise the property. So those are just part of my team. You know, if I was looking at my team, that would be part of my team. One thing I do, I do a lot of analyzing properties, running numbers. I think it makes sense. That is like 
That's what I do. And it's a lot of numbers, and it's putting together and understanding what they mean because the numbers tell us. So I analyze a lot of properties. Uh, and then LOI, a letter of intent. And a letter of intent to me is saying, what are your intentions of this property? That's all you're doing. You're submitting a letter of intent to a buyer, uh, to an owner, somebody who owns a property, and you're telling them what you want to do. And so I usually, if I'm actually buying or even wholesaling, it doesn't matter, I have the seller create all the paperwork because I don't want to do it. I have the seller create the purchase and sell agreement. And then I do have an attorney. And usually I just be like, you know, just send it to my attorney. If you have an attorney, you're going to have to pay for him or, or her. You're going to pay for them to do whatever you want them to do. Nine is out of ten, if you get a good rapport with them, the money can come out of the deal. You know, if you're doing a deal, they, you know, money can come out of the deal. You just got to talk to them and see, you know, how they want to do business. Any deal that that's done, they're going to want some type of earnest money. And typically, it's like one percent of the deal. So if the deal is twenty-two million, just do one percent of twenty-two million. Uh, before you even get there. If you don't understand the terminology in the, in the commercial world, because I said I was going to talk commercial, you probably won't even get to the deal. You know, if you don't understand, like, cap rates, they're going to look at you like, you know, what are you even, you're wasting my time, really. And so that's one of the things you have to have to pay attention to, just certain terms, cer- certain terms for me, income, expenses, NOI, mortgage, the cash on cash return the cap rate, the cap expenditures. So those are just, just basic terms. And if I gave them to you, you probably have to keep going back and looking at them. And it's okay. You have to start somewhere. And I need to know that cap rate, and I need to know the cash on cash return. Cap rates let me know how much I'm going to be making off of my money. Everybody wants to know that as an investor. They need to know. And I just spoke to some guys today, told them, you know, double-digit returns double-digit cap rate, and it lets them know, okay, well, they're going to make X number of dollars off of their money. And that's people want to know, you know, am I going to make money on this or am I going to lose money? And that's kind of like the biggest things people want to know. So income, property's income has been, I look at the past 12 months, uh, and then I want to look at the past three years, and I want to look at month to month. I want to look at all the freaking numbers and see a lot of these folks, what they do is they hide the numbers and you got to kind of tell a story with the numbers. And if you don't have that, then it's like, oh, my goodness, what do you do? What do you mean? You got to make it up. You got to figure it out. And so you can, it's not like giving up, but you got to figure it out. And there's certain things that you ask for to let them know, you know, when I go into a property, I say I want the T12 or the trailing 12, and that's just a month to month what people have been paying for this property. And then I want to know, you know, what, what are the expenses on this thing? And expenses is just a whole category of different things that add up, and then it gives you uh, an idea of what you need uh, for the property. So this is how it usually works. Let's say you have uh, a property, and they want to sell the property to you for 500000 just using that number, only because I'm working on a deal right now that's like that. So 500000 So the expenses, you know, a lot of people should use, for me, it's going to be 250000 And there's average numbers in here as well, and, and I use these numbers across the board. When I say across the board, I'm talking about across the U.S. Some markets are going to be different. You know, the numbers are going to change. So that's why you need the professionals in that market. And if you're talking real estate, you should be all the way looking at uh, the, the broker should be able to help you out, you know, using the expertise of these people that are out there doing this on a day-to-day basis. I want to know the cash flow of the property. Cash on cash return is is huge to me. And what it means is a high cash on cash return, it means my money is moving fast. Low means that the money is staying in the investment for a longer time. So cash on cash return, I want a high cash on cash because I want to make sure the money's moving. And then I already, you know, discussed cap rate. And a, a one thing a lot of people don't want to look at is, is some of the small things that is like the appliances, like when are they when are they being due, or, or when is uh, when is the roof been changed? When has the uh, the HVAC been done? You need to know all that information because what you don't want to do is when you get the property now you're going through and you having to fix everything, and so it's cutting into your 
uh, into what how much money you're bringing in. So you have to look at that. Another thing I do as far as when I analyze deals, I look at the classes of the properties. I look at the classes and then I say, okay, I don't want to deal with class D property. That's just me personally. I would rather wholesale that if somebody wants to take it. And if you look at, like, when we were in school, we looked at if you got an A, you did good. If you got a B and C and D, you didn't do so good. And that's kind of like how classes are set up. So class A property, you have, those are mostly your newer properties. They don't need really no fixing up. Class B properties, you go a little bit less and then C and then D. But you can have a class C property in a B area. You know, and it's just that's just what it is. You can have a class B property in an A area, and that means it's just a great area to do business in. So, when you're working these deals, the banks are going to come in, and if you want to use the banks, not to say you have to use a bank, you can use a lender, but a bank will come in. They'll look at a thing called the debt service coverage ratio, and so I'm not going to go through all that, but they're going to look at it, and they want to know that you have enough money to cover the mortgage payments. They want to know that you have enough money left over after everything is paid that the mortgage can be paid on the loan. So I'm going to leave that there. I don't want to go too far into this stuff. So when I make my offers, you know, I look at so many different numbers, and then I look at the numbers, and sometimes I don't get all the numbers. Like right now I'm working on some deals. I don't have all the numbers. So it's kind of it gets frustrating a little bit, but you have to use other property that's in the area to kind of get your numbers and make sure that, you know, you're doing what you need to do on your end. You're using comparables. So you find, well, hopefully you have find a good broker. And they can find some more commercial properties that sold within the last 6 to 12 months that's in your area that meet your criteria on the property that you're working on. And then you can use their numbers, and that's all it's doing. You're just comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges. That's all you're doing. And so you need a, a good uh, broker. Uh, some brokers will give you a thing called pro forma, or you may get a thing called a pro forma, and all that is, that's a breakdown of numbers that, and it's a guesstimation. That's all they're doing. They're guessing what the numbers are, and then they're giving you those numbers. And for me to you, I'm not really a guessing guy, but I will take it if that's all they have to offer. So I take their information and then I put it into a spreadsheet to try to figure out, you know, if they're really close or if they're, you know, kind of close. So, you know, you give pro forma numbers up to somebody and, you know, they're kind of guessing on what this could be. But like I said, you have industry standard information that you can kind of look at to say, okay, how much should it be in this area per door? And if it's way out of whack, then you got to put it to where it's all about making sure that you get as close to the good numbers or the right numbers as possible because once you buy this property, it's yours, okay? So you don't want – nobody can rush you on this deal. I get people that rush me all the time. Hey, uh, when are you going to close? You want to go to the table and close? And I'm just like, I don't even have all the information. Keep what you have. Make sure you get all the information first and make sure that, uh, you know, you're not the only person looking at the deal. Uh, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big uh, player on allowing other people to run numbers as well. Now, depending on how you're getting your money, I'm going to talk about that here in a minute as well, how you want to use the money or get the money. So some people go out to uh, – do some private funding for their deals. A lot of people do. It's okay. The thing is you have to know how to acquire money. One way to acquire it is engaging in an SEC attorney. So you can be what we call a syndicator. I'm a syndicator as well. You syndicate deals, meaning you put deals together and you go out and you find people who have the funding that's going to help you to close on the deals. So you have to syndicate a deal, and it's okay. So your SEC attorney and I got one of those as well, it's going to take some time to get together the documentation that you need to put together this deal. And anytime you're involved in an SEC attorney, that means you're going big time. And big time to me is you got some multi-million dollar deals out there, million dollar deals, 
and you want to make sure everything is done right because everybody and their mother and brother is going to have be, be watching. And so that's why you need an attorney to take care of the heavy lifting for you. And I don't want to go into too much, but I will tell you this. An SEC attorney will cost you about ten dollars or $15,000, lean more towards the $15,000, and that is going to be the best money you spend to make a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand. Is that okay? So you got to put up fifteen thousand, and now you're going to bring in, you know, you can bring in three hundred thousand. That will be okay, only because you want to make sure that you are one hundred percent on, on point on the legal documentation that you need to provide. That's all you're doing. You're conducting your due diligence, making sure everything is supposed to be done, uh, opening up escrow because you know your lawyers are going to do that and have all that stuff done. So your investors can deposit their money, and that needs to be done. I'll say within a 15-day period, all the money needs to be on the table. And what's going to happen is no matter how great a deal you have, you're going to have people out there that's going to say, yeah, I'm going to do this and that, and we're going to be there, and we're going to make it happen, and then they fade the black, and meaning that they're not going to uh, – you're not going to hear from them. They're going to disappear. It happens on me and so many deals and everything that I do. Well, when I'm, you know, getting private money. There's a way to do private money, family. And I know a lot of people, uh, they, a lot of people do it wrong. Some people do it right. But let me tell you, I'm not giving you any legal advice. Please talk to a lawyer, an attorney that, uh, that has the right information for you. But I will say this. I want to be clear. <laughs> When you're going out to get private funding, if you do it the wrong way, you can get yourself in trouble legally. I'm going to say it one more time. If you're doing private money, you can get yourself in trouble on a legal, from a legal standpoint, okay? And I don't want you to get in any trouble. So it's best to have an inkling of what you're supposed to do and then find the qualified people that are that are can be legal representation for you so you can do it the right way. So one way is private funding, private money, whatever you want to call it, where you get people to work with you and y'all band together and y'all do this. Another way is growing your own business up to where you can get funding, and that's called business credit. And I know I talk about this all the time. I had to put another name to it. Because there was so much back and forth with it. So I will say this. Business credit is getting funded to where you don't have to give a personal guarantee, you don't have to provide your Social Security number, and you don't have to provide your credit score. That is huge right now. It's going around. People are getting funded. It's taking, it takes time to build, though. You are not about to get it in a week. It's not going, you're not going to get it in a month approximately 90 days, but that's approximately, and it depends on the different vendors that you use. So one of the best deals you can get in, when you start doing like multi-million dollar deals, there's a thing out there called non-recourse, meaning that they can't come after you if the deal goes bad. That is a great thing to have. They can't come after you, but they can come after your business. Or they can just take the deal back from you. You know, if you have the deal, they can't mess with you as a person, but they can take the deal. The bank can take the deal, whoever, lenders. So what I do is I like to add value to what I'm giving out to show people that, hey, there's money out there that you can get access to without, you know, throwing yourself to the wolves, you know, that in a, in a, in a, in a nutshell. You have to throw yourself to the wolves. You can actually build your own. I put a lot of content out there. I'll send it out. And I, I put down uh, spreadsheets. I put down uh, checklists. I'm at Charles and Speaks at Yahoo. Very simple. C-H-A-R-L-E-S, the letter M as in Mike, and Speaks, S-P-E-A-K-S, like I'm speaking to you, but Speaks with an S. Charles and Speaks at Yahoo.com. Or just find me on all, I'm all over social media. You know, you can inbox me or what have you. And, you know, just get the information and start studying this stuff. It's a lot of content a lot of free information that we have access to, and there's a lot of bad information. I will say that because I received a lot of bad as I was going on this journey of uh, finding funding. You know, I lost a uh, 
eight million dollar deal to which I was going to make seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to start, and then you know you're going to get paid. I was going to get paid off of that deal for the at least another three years. And the funders went away. They walked away from the deal at the last minute, and that taught me a very valuable lesson. Eggs in one basket. Understand how to find the money, and that led me on my journey to finding business credit finding how to do private money and all that kind of stuff, and then finding federal money and then, you know, finding how to do government contracts. So I was on a journey to find funding. That's what I needed, and I started finding all these different ways, and now I'm working with nonprofits to get money and working with uh, different organizations to find them funding, doing speaking engagements to find funding. I got a speaking engagement this this Saturday uh, talking about funding. You know, and talking about funding and actually coming together and showing people how it's done and how we can do it on a bigger scale. Because, like I tell people, you can go out here and try to be great by yourself. Uh, the old African proverb if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go farther, go together. I'm a big component, a big, big person on going. Going as a unit. I don't want to do all this stuff myself. I'm not trying to be the broker and the realtor and the and the attorney and the carpenter. I'm not. Trying, that's not my mo. I work people that are quality, and I work with them to say, "Hey, let's do this together." See, I'm working with people from Canada right now, uh, from overseas in Africa right now, from all across the U.S. right now, in different aspects and different parts of my businesses. I work with so many people on doing uh, the what what I do in, as far as business. So I'm going to give a, a snapshot of this overview again. Do a lot of research. If I were you and, like, if I didn't know anything about real estate, I'd probably start out at YouTube. You know, just start reading and listening to people's YouTube information that they have to pass. And then I'd find somebody in my area that, that does what I want to do like real estate, residential, or commercial, and, and lock on with them and start from there. You don't have to go to a certain location. Now, I do get it. Somebody said, told me that, well, we don't have a lot up here. And I was like, well, where are you? And they, was, they told me this little bitty town. And I was like, okay, you got me on that one. You, you don't have a lot there. So you may have to go to the next town over. It may take you two hours. So I don't know where you are. But you may have to go to a bigger town, but if you're in a some research there and then go from there. So that's how you actually work this thing. So what you do is you can go online to meetup.com and just type in your city and put in real estate and go to your local real estate investors club. And, and then from there, you're going to branch out to other people. There's different events that's happening in your city, I'm pretty sure, just like mine. And you start reaching out to other people. No, you do real estate. I'm a, I do real estate. I do real estate. I'm an investor. I'm an investor. You know, if you're a realtor, you're a realtor. But you got know, to tell people. But if you're an investor, you're an investor. Just let people know and start linking on, linking up with good people. And then you go from there. Uh, the best way to do real estate is actually do it. I got a uh, uh, 55 unit working on here. And I put it out into a couple of groups that I'm in. And I said, if y'all want to meet with me, at the 55 unit, I'm about to go do some uh, a walk around there and, and learn on the spot, you know. And then after we did that, we went to uh, a place to go. We didn't get nothing to eat. We just sat in a, a restaurant, and we sat there and went through the deal that I'm actually working on, uh, just asking questions and getting stuff answered and making moves that way. So there's so many ways to do this, but the best thing I can tell you, somebody just asked me, you know, they said they want to write a children's book. And she said, where should I start? I said, you start writing. You know, we got to start this stuff. And look at this. What is this? April, y'all. January, February, March. What have you done? Three months. Done. Like, done. What have you done? Like, seriously. Like, what have you really done? And are you going to be where you need to be when it comes time at the end of the year? That's what, you know, that's up to you. You got to take, you have to take action. It's all about action. It's so good to come over here and talk to all these people and, you know, y'all go to all these seminars and getting all this information, but if you don't do anything with it, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters if you don't do anything with it, okay? 
I'm just trying to share some insight information, family. I just I really want everybody to win. That's all I want. I want you to win, but you have to get up and you have to do it for yourself. So I'm going to pray us out. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray to you right now to bless those who are going through the struggle. I'm praying for those that are listening to me, dear Lord. I pray for their strength, their unity. I pray for empowerment for them. I know some people feel like that they may not make it and everything is not coming fast enough and they're frustrated. They're down to their last dollar. And they believe it won't get any better, but dear Father, let them know that everything happens in your time. We know you'll provide everything because you have already provided us everything. Father God, you're all-knowing, and we know we must believe in you and trust in you and actually get up and take action. And I know we get weak, but we must continue to keep the faith in trying times. Somebody listening to this right now is going through it. And, Father God, I want you to manifest their destiny. Give them everything that they've set out to do. Father God, and know that I know they've held on, and if they've done everything they want to do, please bless them. And I pray for everybody who's lost sight. I pray for everybody who's sick. I pray for those who's making excuses. I pray for more strength for everybody, and I pray for unity. And everybody that's listening to this, I just want to say amen. This is Charles McCutcheon. I'm your favorite entrepreneur. I'm hungry. Nobody can stop us as a unit. Together, we can go further. God bless everybody. Y'all take it easy.